there is an easier way to put a pattern on top of a shape. Um, let's say you wanted to do a, a uh, leopard spot pattern or a Dalmatian spot pattern on something. Uh, I did an earlier video uh, where we put a pattern, a random pattern on the word toys. And uh, there was a bit of work involved in that, but there actually is an easier way to do it. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do off to the left of the table is I'm going to draw uh, six random shapes. Now that I've drawn these six random shapes, I'm going to uh, make a master copy of them and then copy and populate the uh, letters in the same way that I did before, except I'm going to eliminate the need to do the trimming and whatnot. So let me zoom out just a little bit on this table. I'm going to zoom out a little here and I'll go F3 and I'm just going to take this area here so we can look at it. All right. Now this will be our master copies over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply copy them over to here. And let's see, do I want to make them any smaller? Maybe for this demonstration, I'll just scale them down just a little bit. Okay, so here's our masters, and here's the ones we're going to nest. The next thing we need to do is, uh, with the nesting, one of the interesting things is, um, it the nesting will look at the material and what's already been used as part of a design, and it will fit in uh, other pieces into the dropouts if it can. So again, I'm going to uh, I'm going to go W, zero comma zero, enter, and ninety six comma forty eight enter, and that puts a four by eight sheet of material on the table. I'm going to use the same text that I did before. Toys. I'll open it up here in the impact font, and I'll put it here okay so there's the word toys and what we want to do is we want to fit this pattern randomly into the word toys nested in there so again if i were to create a large quantity quantity of these out here it would not nest them correctly because it would nest the largest shape first and then the next shape down and the next one down and down and down and all of these little pieces would end up over here in the s because it ran out of room so we have to do them one group at a time, which is here. However, the nice thing about nesting is this purple area that you're looking at um, is a 4x8 sheet. And as far as Design Edge knows, that is a piece of metal art with the word toys. Actually, it doesn't know that it's letters, but it's, it, with these four shapes, T, O, Y, and S, cut out of it. All right. So it says, hmm. These pieces are small enough to fit inside of these dropouts. So let's try and fit them in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, grab this and I'm going to say machine nest shapes from the left. 96 by 48 area, which is the sheet area that we're working in. And I'm going to say quantity of one. And uh, let's see, I'll do the part spacing at point five inches just for the heck of it and we'll rotate the parts to get them to fit and the rotation degree just so it's not too complicated we'll do it at 10 degrees all right i'm not going to convert them to cut pass because we can do that later and what i'm going to say is okay and it nests them into the t i'm going to take them again copy them machine nest parts Remember, that's Control-7, Nest Shape, and click OK. And you'll notice it fits them in there. I'm going to keep doing this all the way across. Now you'll notice that there's some space up here where some of these smaller pieces can fit in, but the bigger pieces won't fit in, so they started putting them over into the letter O. But I'm going to keep nesting until I run out of room in the T, and it will probably drop a couple more of these small pieces into the T. Let's see what happens. Control-7. 
nest. Okay. See that? It dropped two of them into the T and might be able to fit one more. I'm going to copy it again. Say control seven, enter. And it got one more into the T. We might even be able to get one more in there. Copy it over here. Control seven, enter. Got one more in the T. Now that looks like the end of it, but maybe, maybe we could fit one little one in there. I'm gonna try it. Copy over here, control seven. Let's see if it goes to the O or if it, if it fits one little piece in the T. Nope, no more room in the T. All right, so then we keep going. And you want to keep going until the parts start falling off of the end of the table because they can't fit any more parts into the letters that you want. So we'll copy again here, right click, control seven, enter with the same spacing parameters and rotation that were set up in the original nesting, copy, paste, control seven, enter. And you'll notice it's starting to spill them out on the outside, but there's still room for a couple of these small pieces. So I'm going to do it again. Copy over here, control seven, enter. I'm going to do it until it can't find any more room to fit anything in there. Copy it, control seven, enter. There it is. I think that's the end of it, but let's try it one more time just to make sure that it can't fit that little piece somewhere else. It's going to try from left to right according to the parameters that you set up, and now it hasn't nested anything into the letter toys. Everything is out here, all six pieces. So it's that's all it can fit into those letters. Now all you have to do is delete your sheet and convert these to cut paths. And Convert to cut pass and it will convert the letters inside, including the O. And you can see that we'll just press uh, F10 to look only at the cut paths. And you can see that those letters now are ready to be cut out of a 4x8 sheet. Now that you've got them like this, if you want to, you can group them. I'll group them, the T, group the O with the cut paths, group the Y, and group the S. Okay, group. Now watch what happens. I'm going to take these original shapes and I'm just going to move them up out of the way. I'll move them up to there. I'm going to take the word toys. Oops. I'll take these four shapes now and I'm going to move them outside of the table. And I'm going to say machine nest shapes. And rotate for best fit. And uh, just for the heck of it, I'll say 10 degrees. And this part spacing, now that we're going to cut them out, needs to be 0.2. It doesn't have to be that far. And I'll say keep existing cut paths and group cut paths with the parts. Okay. And let's see if it fits it in. It does. Look at that. So now we have our sheet W. 0 comma 0 enter 96 comma 48 enter and you'll see that it now that we've nested all of those shapes into the four letters and we've nested the grouped letters into the 4 by 8 sheet we still have this much material which is unused as opposed to if I lay that back back in there again you can see that that if you if you leave them in their orientation on the 4x8 sheet, you're going to use more material. 
all of this space where the S is going to be cut out would be wasted. So simply by moving the letters out of the table and then moving the grouped letters as shapes with their cut paths, group them back into the table, you can actually save this much material for another job. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to page up and go back and we're going to use another shape. Uh, and we're going to, uh, this, it will be the same shape and we're just going to rotate it to show you the difference. Now just to look at nesting from another point of view is to do the scaling in nesting. Uh, let's say that we were to uh, take a shape and the reason I'm going to use the heart is because it's an odd enough shape that that the computer has to think something about fitting it into the design. Uh, the height of this heart will be um, three inches. Okay, and I'm going to set that over here. And now what I want to do is I want to nest this heart into uh, these dropouts of this 4x8 sheet so that the material is not wasted. <laughs> uh, the hearts, remember when they nest, uh, they, what, they nest uh, with the intent to have all of the individual pieces dropped out and cut as finished pieces. But if you want to end up with the letter with the hearts dropped out of it, uh, it's not going to lay out a pattern randomly. For instance, if I were to take this and I were to say machine nest parts, and I were to say I want uh, 20 of them, okay, and I can rotate for best fit, and uh, I'm going to populate from the left. We won't bother converting them to cut paths and whatnot. And let's see, the scaling is going to be at 100%. What you're going to see is it's going to lay those hearts into the T, but that's not really random. You see all of the hearts are in the same position running along this edge. And what I'm looking for is something like this, a more random pattern in the uh, in the letter so that these letters don't just, just line up like this. That's not what I'm looking for. So let's go back and we'll try something different here. I'm going to take this heart shape and I'm going to do an array. And I'm going to do a polar array of um, 10 different sides. I'll say OK. And the array, when you're, when you're nesting, the parts can be on top of each other or far apart. It doesn't matter. But just for a demonstration, I'm going to put them like this. And now you'll see that the, the, the heart is represented in 10 different orientations over here. Okay, we'll call that our master. I'm going to move it up here. And I'll take the, uh, I'll second that, I'll move it down here. And I'm going to try and get a little bit closer to the work that we're looking at. So you can see it better. There you go. Now, there's our master. And um, you know that when you nest shapes, you can either rotate them or not rotate them. Well, since they're already rotated here, this will be my assortment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that down here and I'm going to say control seven nest from the left side. I am not going to rotate the pieces. You see, I took it off of the rotation and I'm not going to do any scaling and let's see what happens now. If I put them in, well now, now you've got some, they're still lining up along the edge of the T. But at least you're getting some rotation of the pieces. So what I'll do is I'll copy them down here. Oops, not Control-T. Sorry, Control-7. Once again, I didn't get a lot of sleep. And I'm going to nest them in there. And I'll just keep doing that. Copy down here. Control-7. Enter. And you can see you can get a more random pattern of the design uh, in, in your intended shape. You don't get that lined up, um, you know, crayons in a box kind of a thing where everyone's, everything's pointed in the same direction because that's not what you're looking for here. So I'll say control seven, enter. And now here it's run out of room for these hearts according to the uh, parameters that I set about spacing in between parts and spacing from the edge. And so the T is not really balanced. Uh, the way I would hope it was, hope it would be. So I'm going to go back 
and let's try it again I'm going to copy it down here and I'll say control 7 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this part spacing a little bit farther apart I'll say point 5 okay and you'll see that it throws them in there like so we'll try it again copy it down control 7 enter copy it down again control 7 enter and see now it's it's again it's starting to it's, it's left these areas in the T open and it's starting to populate over into the O I'll try it one more time copy down here control 7 enter well now it's populating the O so it has decided that there's no no more room in the T that's still not the look I'm looking for I want these spaces to be filled in a little more uniform so now I'm gonna do something a little different I'm going to say control 7 and I'm gonna say scaling and I'm going to say the scale is going to be the minimum is 50% of the original size and the scale step will be 25%. What that's going to mean is it's going to be a large, a medium, and a small heart depending on what will fit in there. Now I'm going to scale in from the left and you'll see that it, it made the large hearts. There's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, but it fit in a 50% heart right there, which filled in a little bit more space. If I do that again, copy down here, control seven, you have to, for some reason you can't lock this in. I'm gonna say 50%. We'll populate from the left and put it in there. Again, copy, control seven, 50%. I wish Design Edge would allow you to lock these values in, but it doesn't for some reason. I'll say OK. And see, now you'll see it's putting in some smaller hearts. These are at 75% of the original size, and these are at 50% of the original size. You see that? That's 75%, that's 50%. But it's starting to fill in more space. So again, I'll copy them down here. <laughs> Control 7. I'm so used to putting text in. And again, 50%. And you'll notice now that it made most of the hearts smaller than their original size because it's trying to fit them into the available space in the letter T. I'll do it one more time. I think I can get one more, one or two more in there. Control seven, 50%. And okay. Okay, now it has run out of room in the T, but you can see that the distribution of the hearts in the T are more uniform all around the edges because what it did was it took spaces where it couldn't fit the large heart and it looked and said, well, how about the 75% size? No, that won't fit down here. So then it made a 50% size and it fitted in in these places where it could fit them in. And it gives you a more even distribution. Let's try it even one more way. I'm gonna page up. Now this is time consuming because Design Edge won't let you lock defaults in, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these hearts and I'm gonna say Control-7. Now see, I'm gonna feed from the left here and I'm gonna say minimum size 50%. And say, okay. Now I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna go around what I call the clock. I'm gonna say Control-7. Now I'm going to feed from here. minimum size 50% and say okay. Now take it again, copy, control seven. I'll feed from the top this time, 50%. And now look, it's starting to populate the other letters. Here, I'll copy down, control seven. 50%. I'm going to change the rotation. You see, I'm going around this feeding from different points in the design in order to give more randomness to the way it places these shapes in here. Now I'll say, okay, 
Now look what it did over here at the S. I'm going to grab this, copy it again, control 7, change my rotation, 50%, say OK, and I'm going to continue doing that uh, to populate the rest of these letters. And of course, that will speed up this video. Now I'm going to reverse the rotation. With control seven, I'll start going in the opposite direction. 50%. Copy. What I'm trying to do is add in a little randomness that the program will not add in for me. So I'm, I'm attacking the fill from different angles. I'm allowing the program to put in a 100%, 75%, or 50% size heart as it fits. And I'm going around the design clockwise and counterclockwise. Control 7. I'll change the angle from here. Go 50%. And say OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to randomly select. Well, I'll just I'll just continue with the pattern. I'll tell you what, that's what I'll do. I'll go clockwise again. 50%. I don't have much more to do here. And I think that's about it. But let's see. I'm going to do it one more time. See if it'll fit any little hearts in anywhere. And copy them down here. Control 7. And let's see, I was going clockwise, so I'll come in from that side and say 50%. And now you'll see that it fit one heart in, and the rest of them were landing on the outside because they were too big to fit in the letters. And once you get this done, of course, you would delete your outside shape, and there, there is your pattern. Let's take a look at it in the proof view. And there you have it. Now that's about as random as you can get with, uh, with placing these hearts uh, or these shapes. It can be any shape. It can be ducks or it can be diamonds or it can be squares or rectangles or circles or ovals or random uh, uh, isometric designs or whatever. But the whole idea here is to take a shape, the letters T, O, Y, and S, and put a pattern across them using Design Edge that is seemingly random. And even though in this area at the top of the Y you have all large hearts, and it doesn't get to the smaller hearts until you get down to here. You can see that in the O and the T and the S, there's a mixture of all three sizes at the top. So if I wanted to change that, I could take these out here, take out some of these large hearts. I'll delete them. And I'm going to do it again. Copy it down here. Control 7, I'm sorry. And I'll populate from the bottom up. And I'll go 50%. Minimum and maximum size 100 with no rotation because they're already rotated over here. And say OK. Let's see what happens. I will need to um, bring back my rectangle here. There it is. So what we'll do is we will get rid of these large hearts here and see if we can't populate them a little more random at the top of that Y. Control 7, 50%. From the bottom up. Oh, I put some of them in the, in the S over there. That's interesting. We'll copy here. Control 7. From the 
let's go from this angle 50% this is all by chance I'm, I'm just trying to add in randomness here oh look at it it's still populating the s with the smaller size with the smaller hearts that's interesting I'll copy it down here I'm trying to get it to fill in the top of the Y control 7 I'll come from this angle at 50% Still putting them in the O, finding places for the smaller hearts. Copy. Control 7. I'll stay with that same angle. I'm trying to get it to populate the Y. Okay. At some point, <laughs> it's starting to put them outside. But why isn't it populating this Y? That's interesting. Let's try it again. Control, copy, control seven. Populate from the bottom, 50%. It should fill in that Y. There it goes, it's starting to fill it in now. So now I'll copy it down here. And you can see it's a little bit more random. Control seven. I'll come in from this angle. 50%. Yeah, see see what's happening now with the Y? We've got some large sizes and some 75% here. Here's some 50s at the bottom. Let's see what happens. I'll copy it down here. Control 7. I'll populate from this side. 50%. Still large hearts at the top. I'm trying to get some small ones in there. Copy it down here. Control 7. I'll populate from this angle. 50%. Ah, see? Now you can see at the top of the Y, we have large and medium, the 75% hearts, and we have the 50% hearts mixed in with that. You see? So it gives you a little bit more uh, randomness in the pattern. And again, we'll get rid of this outside rectangle here because we no longer need it. And there's your word toys with a seemingly random assortment of hearts uh, evenly distributed across the letters. So this nesting program has a lot of different options. When you select something and you say nest, control 7, you can change the angle that it populates your shapes from. You can change the minimum and the maximum size of your pieces. You can either rotate the pieces or not rotate them. By doing a polar, by, by doing a polar array like this, I've already given it 12 different acceptable angles for these hearts and all of these hearts are one of those 12 hearts fit in at either 100 or 75 or 50 percent of size there's no point in mirroring, mirroring hearts because they're symmetrical so you, there's no point in flipping them to try and fit them in better and uh let's see you can check the rotation angle and we could also do the look ahead that's interesting the way that works um the way that works is if you select this heart here and you tell it to look ahead three steps if you typed in three it would fit the one heart that you looked at and then it would move three steps ahead and look at the next heart rather than the next one in sequence it would move three steps ahead and look at this one here okay so by randomly changing the direction that your shapes are populated from and giving it some variance in size and scale and this scale I had here was at 25 percent which means um, either either 100 percent or 75 percent or 50 percent now I, I could have done that scale step step at um, uh, at 5 percent or 10 percent and then you would get other sized hearts
That uh, was a friend of mine calling. So anyway, my point is um, there are some variables in here, but Design Edge, it, I, I wish they would update their ne shape nesting software so you could click on a button that says, you know, random population. And and as it, as it fills it in, it would fill from here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here, you know, etc. And it would give you more randomness in your pattern. Uh, and also the size, you know, it would be nice if the scale size was, was such that um, you can manually set the scale. I could make this minimum scale 25% and set it at 10% uh, at, at steps. And of course, it would give me different sized hearts and fit them in. Um, so nesting, nesting was designed not to create a pattern for a piece of material like this, a random pattern. It was designed to efficiently put your shapes into a piece of material to, wait, to, to minimize the metal waste that's around the shapes when you cut them out. You want to end up with this string spaghetti skeleton because you've got so many pieces out of the metal that, that, that none of it's wasted. And that works fine. And like I said, it lines up all the hearts along one edge here. And then, it, and then it flips them around 180 degrees and nests them all in. And if all of these pieces are going to fall out, okay, that's great. You know, it, it, it's an efficient use of the material. But when you're trying to lay a pattern on something, uh, let's say this was leopard spots. And you had the word, uh, you know, jungle or Africa or whatever. Uh, you would not want those leopard spots to all be lined up like they were laying in a sardine can. You want them to be random, random in position, random in rotation, random in size. And you want the end result to be this randomness that uh, that you seek. And, and currently, DesignEdge does not have that capability. But this video shows you ways to come close to creating that randomness. And I hope this video, um, you know, opens up your eyes to the to the nesting feature. As always, I offer free online training, connecting our computers together through a Zoom conference room or freeconference.com. I don't charge for my time and I can either help you learn the software from square one or if you're already fairly good with the software and you just want to find a quicker way or a better way or more efficient way to do something or a different way to do something, uh, from somebody who thinks outside of the box. <laughs> um, I'd be more than happy to get online with you and help you work out the issues. If you have a design that has a, an error or a problem and you can't figure out why you can't correct it and why it won't cooperate, <clears throat> you would upload the file to me. We would connect our computers together online and I would go through it and not only find your problem, but I would show you how to find the problem in the future and how to correct the problem to make your plasma cam experience more enjoyable. You send your name, address, and phone number to add me now at mail.com, not gmail. And you would uh, send me, uh, like I said, name, address, and phone number. Tell me about your table, your software, your upgrades, and what it is you think I can teach you uh, online. And I'll be more than happy to do that, and I don't charge for that time. If I do come out to your home or office location anywhere in the 48 states, I do charge a fee for that, uh, especially now, now that gasoline's approaching $10 a gallon by 4th of July. That's my prediction. You heard it here first. $10 a gallon by 4th of July. Um, if I have to drive out to your location and train you, I am going to charge for that because, of course, I have the fuel, the wear and tear on the truck, the hotel, the food, um, all of the other expenses of traveling, the tolls and, you know, whatnot. And also the cost of maintaining my home in my absence. I have to pay somebody to mow my lawn, tend to my uh, uh, shop and home alarm systems to make sure that they're uh, intact, collect the mail, pay bills, and stuff like that. So uh, it all costs money. <clears throat> and of course, money makes the world go round. You've heard that song. I hope this video has helped you. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me at this email address. Uh, the way I usually answer questions is I make videos. 
Uh, the reason is you can watch the video five or ten or twenty times until you fully understand what it is I'm trying to tell you. And uh, I think it works better than me talking to you over the phone. And besides, as you can tell, my, my voice tends to crap out after a while. So uh, it's easier for me to make a video because I can pause and and uh, put my thoughts together and kind of make it smooth and, and flowing. <laughs> All right. I hope you this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and and be sure to comment and uh, be sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel because more videos are going to come as long as my heart beats. Bye.